Another popular class of tree-based models is gradient-boosted trees. What is the difference between random forests and gradient-boosted trees? In random forests, we inject randomness in the model in two ways, in data and in features. There is no randomization in gradient-boosted trees. Instead, we use pre-pruning. What is pre-pruning? Pre-pruning is early stopping. That is, you don't let the decision tree grow all the way till the end. So we create multiple shallow decision trees. And the key idea of gradient boosted trees is combining these many simple models to create a strong model. Another difference between random forests and gradient boosted trees is that in random forests, all the trees are independent. Gradient boosted trees, on the other hand, build trees in a serial manner. So the current tree is dependent upon the previous tree. And they build these trees in such a way that each tree tries to correct the mistakes made by the previous one. Here are the two main hyperparameters of gradient boosted tree models. The first one is n estimators, which controls the number of trees to build. Higher values for n estimators means more complex model. The second hyperparameter is this learning rate hyperparameter, which controls how strongly each tree tries to correct the mistakes of the previous trees. Remember that gradient boosted tree models build trees in a serial way, where each tree corrects the mistakes made by the previous tree. So with this hyperparameter, we can decide how aggressive we want to be in correcting these mistakes. Higher learning rate means each tree can make stronger corrections, which means more complex model. Now that's the level of detail we are going into about what are gradient boosted trees and how do they work. In the next part, we are going to look at brief examples of using three gradient boosted tree models, XGBoost, LightGBM, and cat boost. The expectation here is that you should be able to use these models on your own prediction problems. Let's start with XGBoost. It is not part of scikit-learn, but you can install it from this XGBoost package. This package has similar interface and this particular implementation of XGBoost supports missing values. It also supports sparse data. It's also very fast because it supports parallel training. It also supports GPU training. And in general, you will observe better scores than random forests. Our another tree-based model is LightGBM. Again, it's not part of scikit-learn, but it has similar interface. You can install it in your Conda environment with this command. And in general, LightGBM results in small model. So the model size is much smaller. It's much faster compared to random forest. And typically it will give you better scores than random forests. So if your model size is smaller, it's faster. And if it is giving better scores than random forests, then why not? Our third tree-based model is CatBoost. Again, it's not part of scikit-learn, but you can install it using this conda command. And usually it will give you better scores than other methods, but it is much slower compared to XGBoost and LightGBM. Okay, now that we have these new algorithms, new classifiers in our toolbox, Let's try all of them on our data set. Now, I already have ran it beforehand because it takes a while to run. So what am I doing here? I'm importing the appropriate libraries. So I have decision tree, then XGBoost classifier, XGB classifier from our XGBoost package, XGBoost library, then LGBM classifier from LightGBM and CatBoost classifier from CatBoost. I'm creating pipelines for all our classifiers. So our first pipeline is for logistic regression. 
second one is for decision tree, third one is for random forests, fourth one is for XG boost, uh, this fifth one is for light GBM, and sixth one is for cat boost. So these are our classifiers. These are all our classifiers. And here are our results with all classifiers. What do we see here? All our validation scores are better than the dummy classifier. Our best validation scores are given by CAD Boost, and the score is 0 0.872. And our worst validation score after dummy classifier is given by decision tree, which is 0 0.813. Now keep in mind that all these results are with default hyperparameters. And we might get some improvements here if we carry out hyperparameter optimization before comparing these results. So ideally, we would carry out hyperparameter optimization for all these models and then compare the results given by best hyperparameter values for all these models. Also note that there is no big difference between scores of XGBoost, LightGBM, and CatBoost. In this particular case, we are using accuracy as our metric. And we are scaling features because we are also using logistic regression but in general, for tree-based models, you don't really need to scale features. If you look at standard deviation for test scores, that is validation scores, it looks like our scores are more or less stable. Let's look at overfitting. Which models seem to overfit? Decision trees seem to overfit, our training score is 1, and our validation score is 0 0.81. Random forests also seem to overfit, our training score is 1, and validation score is 0 0.85. That said, recall that plot we saw for random forests, the fundamental trade-off plot that we saw in the previous video. And so this overfitting is not as bad as decision tree overfitting. For XGBoost, LightGBM, and CatBoost, we don't seem to overfit that much. Next, let's look at fit times, the time taken to train our models. Usually, there is this trade-off between fit time and accuracy of the model. Now, let's look at fit time for decision trees. Decision trees seem to fit very fast, so the training time is much lower, but decision trees are not very accurate models. Now, CAD boost fit time is the highest one, which is much, much slower compared to all these other models. Random forests also seem kind of slow. And if you see here, then XGBoost and LightGBM, they are giving us better validation scores compared to random forests. So in this particular case, XGBoost and LightGBM are faster and they are giving us better validation scores. Next, let's look at score times. Now score times seem much faster compared to fit time in all these models. In particular for CatBoost, even though fit time is much, much slower, prediction time or score time is much, much faster. Now that we have seen so many different classifiers, you might be wondering which classifier should you use? A simple answer is pick the classifier whichever gives you the highest cross-validation score. But you should make sure that you are not overusing your validation set. If you overuse your validation set, then there is this chance of optimization bias. And your validation scores might not be representative of your test scores. Another consideration when you pick a model is interpretability. How important is interpretability for you? 
If interpretability is important, I would, I would go with a simpler model like logistic regression, for example, or decision tree. Because these simpler models are easier to interpret. The fancier models that we saw before, they are not that easy to interpret. In the next class, we will talk a little bit about interpretability of these nonlinear models. Another consideration is speed and code maintenance. As I mentioned before, in Netflix competition, this complicated ensemble model won, but they didn't end up using this model because of code maintenance issues. So code maintenance and speed are very important aspects when you pick your model. And finally, you could actually use all these models together. 